Welcome to perhaps the final week of working on the Lego minifigure scale Naboo Bongo. As you can see, I've already attached the towel. I know exactly which one I was going for. And I do have to make this look really, really cool because I just saw a video posted by Star Wars of Ahmed Best saying that being in this bongo is the most memorable scene for him and what he enjoyed most about The Phantom Menace. So this scene is now as important as ever and hopefully I can do it some justice. So for the towel, I chose the pattern that I was originally going to go with. I think it does look the best and you can see I have somewhat positioned the towels to be entwined with each other and just make it look like the propellers of the bongo. But today we are going to start work on filling these cockpits. The three of them, there's a few crates I want at the back next to Qui-Gon and then getting the other two filled. So hopefully it won't be long and I can show them off. But I think this is looking really, really cool. I like what we did last week and I look forward to all the progress we can make this week and hopefully we can get this done by the end of the week and I'll show you the finished design. Now, please do ignore the mess off to the side. I'm gonna try and push it out of frame as much as I can. As you can see, I have a few mocks that I haven't yet broken apart. And the only problem with having a bigger desk is it means I can make a lot more mess and not have to deal with it until it gets to like it is now. And that's what I'm gonna spend the rest of my night doing. But I have finished the bongo. I went through a few different design changes and I did initially have way more parts in here to be fair, I probably should have done an update. I could have shown them off. I don't know why I didn't, but I was just in build mode. And initially, if we can get this open, I had a load of different tolls and plates and a lot along the front here. It just looked messy. I want this bongo to look nice and clean. I know it's not exactly a brand new ship in the show, but it does look quite clean. It's a sleek model and it's been quite well kept. So I ended up getting rid of it in the show you can see, in the show, in the movie you can see. I've said that so much for some of my mocks recently. It's starting to creep over into my movie models. That's not good. But in the movie, you do see on the left-hand side, this side, the right-hand side of the ship, our left-hand side, that there is a second, like, dashboard, I guess, in there. And it does look like there's a chair in the middle. I wasn't able to fit it just because of the restriction when this is down. But... It did look like there was a second great level, so I ended up tiling it off. As I said, initially there were a bunch of different plates and I tried different combinations, which was really hard because I kept having to pop these two up each time. But I'm happy with what I've got. It's minimalist, but it looks really, really clean from the outside. So we've got a few of these crates here. I started with the orange and then started replacing them with grey because there also is some grey ones in the model, at least. When I zoomed in to the Visual Dictionary model, there was some. So I really like how it turned out. You can tell there's a few things in there, but it's not too busy. It's quite nice. It looks like it's filled without looking too packed. So there's still plenty of room. And then next to where Qui-Gon's going to sit just at the back, I put a crate to his right and just sloped off the other side. Perhaps there's a few little bits on the floor. When you're working minifigure scale, there's not too much greebling you can add for hand-sized objects because minifigure hands are tiny. But I think I got the messiness yet tidiness. It's hard to explain. Hopefully you know what I mean. I think I should have definitely shown you a few of the other cockpit interiors before destroying them. This one's a little different to the other side. As you can see, I'm not having as much trouble opening them now that I've told off the front properly. But I do have a cone. Basically... This and the other side was all in one cockpit before and then I've sort of spread it out and rather than mirror them, I've had two different designs in there. I think it does look really cool and as I said, it doesn't look too packed but there's definitely a few different crates in there. So I haven't got the minifigures in there yet. I am very worried about the chairs. I don't think Jar Jar can sit in his chair at all because as you can see, I've used a slope for the back and Jar Jar's got the nice is head towels i don't really know what they are but got those big ears swooping down the back of his head i'm gonna have to google and see if they have their own name but i might have to modify his chair it won't be too hard i'll probably just switch out that back bit with a panel but that is for another day 
In fact, taking a look at my initial plan for this week, which hasn't really gone to plan, it's definitely drifted quite a bit. I initially had mini figures for not tomorrow. Tomorrow we're adding all the fish to the base, but the next day it was going to be my day of mini figures, and that was just in case I needed to change the height of the cockpit, change up the seats, perhaps the model needed a big change and needed a day's worth of work. So I think I'm going to keep with that. Tomorrow we will be tackling the fish, so just in a second for you at home. And then we'll work on the minifigures. If I need to adjust it, it'll probably be then Tuesday. I will look at the scaling, make sure I haven't made it too big. I don't think I've checked it since I did the initial frame. So I'll definitely take another look at that. And that will be a whole day dedicated to it. Most of these days are mixed with other builds. So recently I've just finished doing the Lego Star Wars Skyline. If you are new to the channel, definitely check that out. It hasn't come across exactly how I planned. And I did have to modify it as I went through, but at the end of the day, I've already built it. I might as well make the video on it and see what you all think. So definitely let me know what you thought of that video. And there's a few other things like I'm going to work on the gunship and find a few fixes for it. Get them double doors. That's the key thing. Get double doors on the gunship. That's tomorrow. So something like adding the fish to the base isn't as heavy as it was in the first weeks of May where most of the content was just on the Lego releases and different things I was picking up. So it was quite easy to dedicate hours worth of work to this whereas now i've only got the odd hour so it might seem like it's dragging on and it's taking a bit longer than it should but that's just because i don't have the time free to make a lot of these updates so i hope you are enjoying it as you can see it's very dark now the sun has disappeared and most of these updates are coming quite late at night so sorry if i sound a bit rough or tired or the updates tend to drop off as it goes on but I'm really, really enjoying this project. I think my first initial words were, this is gonna be the project that just burns me out and basically just one and done, I wouldn't do any more. But I'm so excited to do the next one. I did say in a few of my videos now when this come out, I think the one that I recorded today was the first one that I made it official at 100K subs. We are building a minifigure Star Destroyer. That is going to happen. I have no plans to change it to change the style or anything change the the scale of the model it's going to be minifigure scale it's going to be as close to 145 as we can get 43 meters long that is massive but of course we'll break it down into smaller sort of dioramas and then stack it up i don't know where i'm going to build this up because we don't have the garden space i'm going to have to hire out a warehouse or just assemble it over a massive field and rent that out because it's going to be massive but definitely subscribe if you do want to watch that and i guess on to adding the sea creatures to the base i am going to try and keep these updates short because i don't want to show off too much of the work i'm doing because i feel like it will just make the showcase pointless in terms of you'd have already seen the whole model. So today we are going to be adding the fish and other sea life. And I'm just going to raid my drawers to see what sort of fishy animals and anything to do with underwater life really that I can find. Once that is done, I think that will be all today. Again, I've got a few other projects that I want to work on because there's so many ideas I want to get out before the June release because again, I've got so many ideas for that. So I'm going to add all the fish to the model and hopefully I can show you what I managed to do. So the fish are in and as you can see, this is the main thing I want to show off the school of fish just down here. Turns out I didn't have as much fish and sea life as I thought I did. It turns out I had four fish, three frogs, which I am including. I know it's underwater, but you can get some sort of underwater toads and two crabs so the four fish have been put here and i have used clips just to hold them in the two by twos as i already said i think that looks really really cool and actually if i had another fish i'm not sure i could fit another one in that line so i'd probably be able to wiggle another one there and that would be it so i'm happy that i had enough to make it look really really cool we've also got the jellyfish that you've already seen there's a sneak peek at a video you may have already seen and that is just an umbrella with a few of the tentacle pieces and we've also got a red crab on the rocks i wanted to put something here i didn't feel like putting more rocks so i've gone with the red crab and that is one of three frogs there is another two frogs somewhere on your screen now let me know down in the comments if you found all three frogs you don't have to say where they are you can if you'd like to but just let me know if you can see all three we also have 
this crab all the way I'll fix it afterwards. We also have this crab all the way over here on the left. And he's actually stolen a blue stone from the top of the tower there. It's a very nice tower and it's going to be hidden by the bongo. But we're all going to know it's there. I'll just have to remember to show it off in the showcase. So that is actually everything for today. That's all my sea life dotted around the underwater bit here. I'm very, very happy with how the fish turned out. And... Tomorrow, I guess, the next step is looking at the minifigures and trying to fit them on the bongo. So, a short update today, but definitely an effective one. Minifigure day is here, and by minifigure day, I mean we're finally going to see if the minifigures fit on the bongo. I'm nervous, I'm excited, and I just really, really hope that the figures do fit, because so far... We are a bit further than being able just to go back and completely redesign the bongo. I will be measuring it up to scale tomorrow. I'm pretty confident it's still holding to minifigure scale, but we've always got to check and make sure we don't need an extra brick width or we've gone an extra brick too far with certain measurements. So I'll be getting this to the desk, putting the minifigures in, switching up what we need to with the chairs, especially looking at Jar Jar Binks. I think he's going to need a special chair just for him. So we'll have a look at that again. I can't wait to have this finish. We're getting so close, but I'm taking it slow and steady and making sure we don't mess up in these final days. So it is just going to be the minifigures, but let's take a look if they fit. And that means we will be taking Kenobi and Qui-Gon off of their display in the background and adding them to this mock. For the minifigures, it's gone quite simple. I don't have a Queen Amidala to add as some little Easter egg. Perhaps we can add a pile of studs or something to represent that character but we've got everyone's favorite books. we also have the padawan kenobi and the qui-gon both from the battle of naboo place it in like 2019 i don't have the new qui-gon yet i would definitely like to pick up that ship but i've got no reasons to pick it up right now so i'm definitely waiting on a sow and hopefully they fit in the cockpit well there's only one way to find out. Let's test it. I'm pretty confident that Qui-Gon's going to have no problems fitting in the back here. Actually, I did forget about his ponytail on the back of his hairpiece. But again, he did manage to fit perfectly. So I am not complaining about that. Kenobi is another minifigure I think would fit quite well. You do have to turn the hands inwards. If you are trying to fit minifigures in a three wide space, the hands on top actually go just wider than that. So to fit Kenobi in quite nicely, we've just got to turn his hand to the side and fiddle around for that panel. And then we'll keep his arm down. So Jar Jar's waving his arms about frantically because he thinks they're going to get eaten or crash into something. And it does look like Jar Jar isn't fitting. So we're going to remove this piece here. We want the one by two. Do we want the one by two underneath it? I'm not quite sure. But we're going to Head over to our parts drawer. This is probably the first time I'm showing off actually getting a piece from here. And we've got our panel pieces up here. Again, forgive me for the bad lighting, but I don't actually think we have any of the dark reddish brown in here. So we might have to find out another way of getting that piece. That is a lovely noise tipping out the Lego. And it does seem that we don't have a dark brown panel. So... I guess we're going to have to wing it with this. And what we can do is reduce the slope that is sitting behind Jar Jar. We need a brick separator to get rid of this. You're getting a proper behind the scenes look at how I work here. So we'll keep the one by two. And I think our next best bet is a one by two cheese slope. So they are in the back of this drawer. There is a brown one just there. And what this will mean is it gives us more space on the top for Jar Jar's ears, but still gives us a little back to the seat. You can see there's still definitely some sort of seat. That's definitely what Lego would include for a model. And it still doesn't work. So we're actually going to want to turn this the other way around and get this between Jar Jar and his ears. And now Jar Jar should fit down... There we go, just have to find the studs. He still doesn't lean back. We might just have to tile off the back of that chair. I'm quite surprised at that. It doesn't quite shut down and I'm not gonna go for it doesn't quite. I want it to shut down fully. So my tiles are actually down here 
in this draw, let's see if we've got a brown one by two. You can see how neat they are until you realize these aren't my only tubs for these bricks. And I do have a few empty drawers up here that I just whack some pieces in. So don't remember I said that, but that is much easier to work with a lot of the time. And now we've got a completely flat chair. It's not idealistic, but I think it's what we'll have to do for Jar Jar. And then we can also lean Jar Jar back, just like Kenobi and Qui-Gon. Don't forget to turn his hand so it fits in perfect. And now we have the cockpit complete. And I know it doesn't feel like a lot. It's really not a lot. It took me probably not even five minutes. You saw literally the whole process besides taking the bongo off of the stand. But I like these quick updates because it's something that's needed, minifigures. And because I'm doing weekly videos, it's enough, it builds up. I don't want this to drag on too long. I wanna get straight to the showcase. So let's take a look at the cockpit and then we'll move on to tomorrow. Taking a look at the three of them, I really like how they turned out. I was so unsure of how empty these ones are, but I think it actually looks quite nice. Lego bricks themselves are quite wide, as someone pointed out. Each Lego brick is about a foot by a foot. So these are some big crates back here. That is a giant chest at the back in grey. But I really do like how the main cockpit turned out. And if you open up the cockpit, you can see there's a few little bits next to Qui-Gon. And you've got the controls at the front. Of course, Jar Jar doesn't actually get any controls. He just gets the screen to see what's coming up behind them. And the bongo's really starting to not just take shape, but it's looking like it's finished. So I think it's day 24 today, which would have meant that we missed out on day 23. Now tomorrow I'm gonna to be out all day, so there won't be an update. And that meant yesterday I was getting ahead on videos and completely forgot to do an update on the bongo. I have measured it, it is mini figure scout, and we'll take a look at that in just a second. But today we're going to be building the bigger fish from the scene and trying to find the right angle to place it on the model. The model's looking amazing so far, and we're just getting to the finishing details. And then tomorrow, as I said, there's no update because I'm gonna be out from early till late. And then the following day, I'll do a quick review of how I found these four weeks building a massive mock. So in terms of minifigure scale, that means this bongo is a one to 45 model of how it would be in real life and how it's represented in the phantom menace so the front portion of this up to about here where the engine starts is 20 bricks i forget the exact measurements of the bongo but that adds because the tau is meant to represent i think the tau is nine meters in the phantom menace which equates to 30 bricks which is absolutely insane and does mean it hovers slightly over the 48 bricks here we could have probably positioned it at an angle going sideways, trying not to knock off any more leaves this video. But I think it looks good enough, especially because, oh dear, especially because over to the right of this display is all my minifigures stacked up. So we do have the space to go over. And one day I would like to be able to build a mock that spans the whole width of that unit. But let's not get ahead of ourselves too much. This is just over 20 bricks from the tip here to the back of these studs is 20 bricks, but you can probably just about see there's a thin line there of these slopes. I'm gonna ignore it. We can just pretend that's not there. Pretend that I, I never bought that up. And this is exactly 30 bricks. I think the bars are meant to be slightly longer, but because I have them bent at the end and I did have to rebend a few, some of them were falling a bit short. It makes up the 30 studs that the towel is meant to be. So it is minifigure scout and that means there's one thing left to do and that is to get work on a fish. I'm not quite sure what design I'm gonna use. I'm gonna to try to go with the initial fish that attacks them and position it. Originally, I was gonna position it down here, but I feel like it should be bigger if it's closer to the front. So I might have to replace it with a jellyfish or whack it on the back of the rocks and perhaps move the jellyfish down here. We'll have to see. But I'm going to be updating that as well as getting a few more things done for tomorrow. And if you did watch my gunship modification video, then the instructions for that should be up on Rubricable by the time the video goes out. You might have seen a short for them because I'm currently also working on them. So if you want double doors on your gunship, check out the video, head to Rubricable, and you can find all my other instructions over on Rubricable. 
That brings me to this mock. Would you like to see instructions for the bongo? I probably wouldn't do instructions for the base. It's not exactly a set that many people will want to build. But for the minifigure scout bongo itself, would that be something that interests you? I don't know how many bricks are in the actual bongo. And I do try to calculate my prices based on the bricks in the model rather than the time spent building it. So I'm not going to charge for a month's worth of building. But if you would like to see the instructions on Rebrickable for the bongo, let me know. And that's something that it will take another month to build it in studio. But at least whilst I'm breaking down this model, I can create the instructions to put up for all of you. And I thought I'd do an update before I finish the fish because a lot of these updates have been once I've actually got it built and taking a look at the finished model. But so far, this is the design that I'm going for. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this back bit because it goes quite slim and very sort of spiked at the top. And there's a few spikes at the top here. But I think this looks very, very menacing. And there is a very limited feature where the mouth can actually move up and down a little bit. And I want to keep that movement. So I'm definitely going to workshop a few different ideas for the head but I think it looks absolutely terrifying and would look great next to the bongo and I think I might actually have finished the fish I have been staring at that image for the last half an hour hour it ain't been that long I did have a break and I went and had some dinner so I haven't been staring at it too long in one go but definitely the last half an hour I've just had that image staring at me and that's given me all the details of the fish. And if I hold up the Lego one, hopefully you'll be able to see some kind of resemblance. My thumb's in the worst possible position, but the mouth does also open just like this image. It's a bit misshaped, but I think it gets the idea across and I think it does look pretty cool. Once again, the mouth does open and close. So however far really looks good on display. I've got the big head with the jaw which is considerably bigger than the body in some of the shots for the Phantom Menace. I guess this was the better side of the model because we also don't really see the other side. So I've done some storytelling of my own and actually taken the back leg off or half the back leg off on the left hand side. I'm not sure we get a good look at it. Perhaps there is three legs in the scene, but I like to think that the creature isn't perfect, has gone through some battles and lived a life before it meets its end in the phantom menace there are some really cool snot techniques here if the camera will let me show you there is a it's one of them one by ones let me show you what piece i have no idea what this is called but it's a really cool piece they use them to keep the wings on anakin's jedi interceptor and i really like the way that this holds on the towel and makes it completely flush using these slope pieces We've then got some clips and bars keeping on the legs. The arms are just, or these pincer-like things are just slopes. And the reason I've done this is because it's probably one of the best ways you can build the pincers. That's what they look like in the model references for Star Wars. Of course, you can see that they're actually just giant fins in that image, but they looked like pincers. So I used two slopes because if you flip the two slopes, they look like the pincers are actually open. So... Again, it's another little reference Easter egg. I like including these little things in my set that are linked to something to do with either the model or with how I built it myself. And you're never going to see these open. I'm not going to display these open unless someone tries to copy what I've done, in which case, good luck with some of the angles I've provided. You're never going to see that like it is. But just in case somewhere in the future I decide to revisit it, I can look back and I've got all these little references in the model. I definitely like the way I did the spikes on top. I would have liked to have got some of the long antennas coming over the top, but I think given the time I've got, and I also just want to get this model finished with now. So I've spent a few hours on this fish and I'm very happy with it. Now we've got to find some space to display it in the mock. As I said before, I think the best way to display this would be to sit it somewhere at the back so that it looks like a massive fish that is just way far behind. So I'm actually going to move the jellyfish to the front corner here and that can fill up that gap. And then we've got that fish with its eyes locked on the bongo swimming from all the miles well over there. So it's actually massive, bigger than the bongo, but it's just far off in the distance, which is why it looks so small. And also mentioning about the towels, because they're only two studs over, 
they don't actually interact with even the Minoc on the side of my minifigure display. They hover over the space that the droids have made here. Hopefully for one of my next models, I'm going to have to do it. If you've been on this channel a while now, you'll know that I absolutely love looking at my minifigures from that angle. So perhaps actually I should move my minifigures up there. But the Bungo, which is what we started talking about here, does have enough space to hang over. So it's really not a problem. And we will be taking a closer look at this in a future video. When you're watching this, I think it's two days time. I'll have the showcase for this up. But now let's get one last look at the fish. Because, as I said earlier, this is the penultimate update. There wasn't one yesterday, there won't be one tomorrow. And in fact, Friday, I will be wrapping this up with my thoughts on the whole month of building. How I found it alongside daily uploads. And just my experience, what I liked about it, what I wish I would have done better. Especially approaching the end here. Knowing what I know now, what would I have changed at the start so that you can make the improvement. I can also look back on this when I'm creating my next massive mark and I just feel better prepared for the next one. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe before you go. And now on to the final update of the minifigure scout Naboo Bongo. Hello there. So it's now the final day. Well, the final day of working on the mock and there's actually going to be no work on the mock today. Today I thought I'd just sit down and let you know how this month has been for me because it's been a long project. It's the longest project in terms of Lego that I've ever done. I don't think I've worked on any project for over a month. It might have been here and there for two, three weeks, but not this long, let alone near enough every single day for the month. I mean, it's not quite been every single day. I did take the one day off to record a bunch of videos. And then yesterday I was out. I got a few new tops. So you'll be seeing them in the videos as well as a trip to the Lego store. Hopefully I'll make a video on that for tomorrow. And if you're keeping up with the community tab, you'll also know that we've got a whole situation with Rubricable. They removed a ton of instructions. And my Lego content is funded by not necessarily me, but the Lego itself is funded by Rubricable and they've cut off most of that income. It's not great, but thankfully, thanks to all your support, we are now monetized on the channel. So hopefully that will end up paying for all the Lego I end up getting, as well as all the other projects we tackle here on the channel, because I need to start saving for that massive Star Destroyer at 100k. Actually, you can't even see the model now. I haven't shown off my desk. This is, I guess, the first you're looking at it. And I'm going to have to sort out the camera angle afterwards. But hopefully, if I can raise this enough, I can lower the camera and then you can see the bongo. At least you can see it a bit better now. But this month has been really, really fun. There's been a few problems on the channel regarding Rebrickable, regarding Bricklink. Bricklink isn't too bad. I just had a bunch of problems trying to find pieces off that to build some of the sets that I have recently and the parts haven't been correct. And it's so nice having one project to sort of switch off to and be able to at the end of every day, because let's face it, most of my updates were coming after dinner, before bed much much later than i would have hoped initially but it just allowed me to switch off from the day and before i sort of kick back and i'm done with lego i'm leaving on a high and it was really really nice slowly seeing what this project became i think the first thing we did was planned out the scale of it and started building the frame and then we added more bricks, we added more bricks and it's a really nice way of building mocks because not only do you build it it's there, it's either gone well or not. You can improve upon it, switch things up. And I know I didn't record everything that I did to this bongo, but I got most of it on camera. So you can actually see the progress I made across the four videos day by day for the most part, at least. It is a bit annoying that towards the end, I wasn't able to do it every single day. And it is gonna be a 28 day project. It's only day 26 today, but then tomorrow I will be filming the showcase in advance. And then that goes out the next day. So the 28 days, I guess 29 days if you include the day delay between me getting my videos out. But it's really been a fun project. And if there's any big models you want to create, I definitely urge taking your time, doing it over a week. I know it's not been as big as 
some other models on this platform. As I keep saying, hopefully we can move the minifigure display into another one of them Smith's frames. I'm still yet to do the math for that. So probably that'll be something that I end up doing today after I finish editing this whole video because a week's worth of content is also a lot of content, but it's been a really big help to me. I found it so, so fun and I cannot wait for the next project. I've got a few ideas what I want to do next, especially regarding Phantom Menace. It is still the 25th anniversary, so I think at some point I would love to build a Naboo diorama, a close to minifigure scale one once again in the whole of the section there. That will of course require me moving my minifigures, but I'm sure that's something we can do at some point soon as well. There's plenty of room up just across in the corner for another Smith's display. I'll probably move my CMFs over and have a whole Star Wars frame for the minifigures, get them off the shelves, and then like we've got the city down below, which you can actually see there is an AT-80 AT walker. I've just taken off half the leg so I can display it there. It is torment in the city at the minute, which I think is hilarious. I didn't get to do my city update in the end. I think last week I kept talking about a city update and then we got some new sets. I think there were two double videos last week, which is absolutely crazy that not only I am able to upload daily and have done for... I think it's since August, so that's like eight, nine months now, but also record an update for the bongo, not quite a full video, and then get another video on the top. Thank you so much for all your support. And once again, this really wouldn't be possible without you because it's the sales on Rebrickable that have actually paid for all the bricks that I bought in the set. So it's a shame that Rebrickable are no longer supporting my instructions, but I am looking to get them out. If you saw the community post from yesterday, you'll know that I'm trying to set up a Discord where I can get instructions out to you. The only problem is the user interface just won't be as friendly as something like Rebrickables. Let me know if you've got any ideas how I can get instructions to you for a fixed monthly price rather than you having to pay per instruction. And especially people that come along later, they just have to pay a month and they can get all the instructions that I've ever made. I think it's a much more friendlier way. I'm not trying to profit off instructions. I'm just trying to get a little bit to put towards the next model. And honestly, a little goes a long way. So back to how I found the model. Again, it's not been easy, but it's not been overly difficult. I've had more fun than stress with this model, if, if anything. And it does look really, really cool. I'm not going to show it off too well. This is the only shot you're getting because I'm saving it for the showcase, which again, I think there's so many different good angles for this. It's not just a diorama that looks good from the front, a bit like the new Lego Star Wars pod race diorama that you can only really display from the front because then you've either got the back of the pod racers, the arch with, I think, Anakin's pod racer just poking out, or just a yellow wall from behind, which is a bit different to how they've done them in the past. The Trash Compactor is a great example of a diorama that looks good from the front and the back, though still from the back, there's only the 3PO R2 Easter egg, which doesn't look as good as the front on display. Overall, I really enjoyed the project. I'm definitely gonna be doing another one. So my first words when filming that this might be the end of this series of giant mock building, it's definitely not. And I'm looking forward to slowly building up to that minifigure scale Star Destroyer at 100k. Thank you so much for all the support on this series here. I know it's only been four, five episodes if you include the showcase, but hopefully this is the first of many and we can only get bigger and better. So don't forget to like if you did enjoy this series, subscribe if you do want to see some more awesome LEGO Star Wars content. And as always, may the bricks be with you.